to get a grip of forecasting with AR1 models, then we can see uh, we can look at this example. We can start to forecast the GDP growth rates. So our y variable is the GDP growth rate, and this is in percentages, and we have data per quarter from 1962 to 2012, qu uh, fourth quarter. And using these data, we can estimate the equation one, which is why t is explained by a, an intercept plus a slope times the lagged value of the y variable. And we have to add whatever is not in our model, the, res um, the, the residuals, uh, but has an effect on the GDP growth rate. And we estimate this model and get this result. And, oops, let's see, we have to do like this. And uh, what we have is we have the fitted values of the GDP growth rate. It's explained by a, an intercept of 1.99 and a slope of 0 0.34 times the lagged value of the growth rate. And we see that these, um, the standard errors are here. And by dividing the coefficient value on the uh, the uh, the um, uh, standard error, uh, then you can get the t values, and in in this case, uh, both these t values are around six. So we say that both the intercept and the slope they are statistically significantly different from zero. And what we also see is the R squared, which is 0 0.1, which means that the, uh, the uh, lagged value of GDP growth can explain about 10% of the variation in GDP growth one period uh, forward. And the standard error of the residuals is 3.16. And remember that these are in percentages. And the number of observations are 100 and 204. Let's say that after estimating our model, we are giving these uh, da data points of the GDP growth rate from 2012 first quarter to 2013 first quarter. And we see that these are in percentages, right? Um, and um, in uh, 2012 first quarter, the GDP growth rate uh, rose by 3.64% on an annual basis. So which means that if the uh, growth rate had um, continued for one year, uh, the GDP growth uh, would be 3.64%. Um, to find the actual value um, for the growth in quarter one, you would just divide this by four. But that's not the point, because these numbers are often um, uh, expressed on an annual basis. Okay, so with these, uh, with our model, and uh, with our estimated model and these data, we can um, try to answer several questions. The first question we are looking at is a positive growth rate of GDP in one quarter associated, associated with positive growth in the next quarter. 
And to answer this, we can look at the coefficient for the slope and whether or not this is greater than zero, right? And we saw that we had a t value of 0 0.34 divided by 0 0.08. So it's about six or something, which means that, well, it is indeed uh, greater than zero. So that's why we can say that positive growth of GDP in one quarter is associated with positive growth in the next quarter. What we also can look at is the correlation between, let's see, I can just remove the clutter, um, the correlation between uh, GDP growth rate in time t minus one and the GDP growth rate in the following time period is given by r squared, right? So r squared is, <clears throat> in this case, when you only have one um, independent variable, then you can take the square root of the r squared and get the correlation. So the correlation between GDP GR in time T and GDP GR in time T minus one equals the square root of R squared, which is 0 0.1, uh, which is, uh, let's see, if we can just make a quick uh, calculation of this, 0 0.32, okay. So 0 0.32. So this is actually the correlation between GDP GR and itself uh, one uh, lag uh, hence. The second question we are answering is what is the forecast for the growth rate of GDP in 2013 quarter one that we would have made in 2012 quarter four based on the above AR1 model? So the AR1 model was yt equals 1.99 plus 0 0.34 times y t plus no t minus one a new mistake minus one so this was our estimated model so if we have data for 2012 we can put that here and if and then we would get the estimate the estimate for the next period the next quarter. So here we just have 1.99 plus 0 0.34 times 0 0.15, which was the uh, the uh, value or the GDP growth rate annualized uh, in 2012 quarter four. So we use this to make an estimate of uh, the growth rate in 2013 quarter one. So let's say that we did not know that this value would be 1.1, but we were going to make an estimate. So according to our model, our estimate is 2.0 uh, percentage points uh, per year. Another question is, is this forecast accurate? And what is the forecast error? And the actual growth rate in 2013 quarter one was 1.1%. 1 .1%. And we have that from our uh, actual value here. And the estimate that we uh, got was 
2%, right? So this is in percent. So our estimate was 2% and the true value was 1.1%. So the forecast error is the forecast error is two, oh no, sorry. It's 1.1% minus 2.0% equals negative 0.9%. Okay, so all these numbers are in percentages. And <clears throat> so we got um, an error of negative 0.9%. And what can explain this uh, fairly large error? And we see that the adjusted R squared is only 0.1, which means that the GDP uh, growth rate ex uh, in, uh, explains 10% uh, of the variation of the GDP growth rate in the next period. So we see that 90% uh, of the variation in GDP growth rate comes from some something else than the GDP growth rate in the previous period. And lastly, ignoring the uncertainty arising from the estimation of the coefficients, what is the estimate of the RMSFE? So explain in words what this estimate means. So the standard error of the regression, which is the standard error of the residuals from the OLS, is 3.16. And remember that the RMSFE, or the mean squared forecast error, con uh, contains two different uncertainties. One is from the population um, residual um, standard errors, and the other is from the estimation of the coefficients. So if we disregard the estimation, uh, uh, the, the uncertainty arising from the estimation of the coefficients, then we can take this um, standard error of the regression uh, as a proxy uh, for the um, uh, standard um, or the mean squared forecast error or the root mean square forecast error. And this means that the typical magnitude of the forecast mistake uh, is around this number, 3.16. And this you can also use to make a uh, forecast uh, or a um, uh, forecast interval. So our forecast from the last uh, um, for uh, 2013 quarter one um, was 2%. Okay, so our forecast was 2.0%. So if we say 2013 quarter one, okay, our estimate is 2.0%, right? It's here. And what we would like to do is to make a 95% confidence interval or prediction interval rather or a 95% forecast interval. So what is the maximum value of that? It's um, it's 2.0 plus 1.96 times 3.16. I don't have the number in my head. And here, the lower bound would be 2.0 minus 
1.96 standard errors times the standard error of the residual. So that would be the upper and lower bound uh, of this one period ahead forecast.